Okay, so we're doing some work on the Rustin Hornsby 7XHR. Got the lubricator on my bench here. And I'm just going to be taking it apart, making sure everything works and pumps the way it should. Make sure all the check valve, check balls are sealing and, and uh, flowing the way they should. And we'll see how it works on the inside. On the outside, the way it is operated, it operates off of the side shaft. There is an eccentric here, and this rod attaches onto the oiler. And that rod is bolted on with this shoulder bolt. This other hole here engages this handle. You can see it. this handle is spring-loaded, and it clicks into place. And in this position, this handle is directly connected to the lever that operates the pump. And as the engine's running, it'll be moving uh, the, the rod up and down. It'll work the lever and pump the oil pump. But prior to starting, you want to pre-lubricate the engine so you disconnect the, uh, the push rod from the, the operating lever here by pulling this handle back and rotating it to get this pin out of the groove. And now the lever can be operated independent of the other lever that is moved by the engine. So you can crank this by hand as much as you need. It'll pre-lube the engine. And then when you're ready to start, you line up these holes, click it together, and you're ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna start by taking the, the top off. And also, in here, this is the fill, and there's a nice little uh, filter screen in here. Take that off. Now there's these two plungers up here, and you can see they don't operate any pump or anything, it's just a plunger. And I believe, uh, let's see, well I don't know, I think it's a manual override for the, the pumping plunger, but let's, let's dig into it further and, and uh, see how it works. Here's a shot of the inside. It's pretty basic in there. You can see here's the the main operating shaft and it operates these two plungers. Okay, so we got it figured out. It's uh, really basic. Well, as you can see, it is pretty basic, but the way it works for each oiler output, there are two plungers. This plunger here is the inlet, and you probably can't see, but at the very bottom, kind of where my fingertip is, there's a hole, and uh, of course this is the oil reservoir, and the oil is sucked up in through that hole. And this is the, um, I guess you call it the metering plunger. Because as you see, there's a very wide slot for this to travel in, and there's some dead space. And that is so you can adjust the travel by pushing this down with these adjusting screws. You can screw them up and down and that holds this either further down or higher up. The higher up it is, the more it allows that plunger to travel. But if you hold it down further, if uh, this plunger is held down, when the oiler operates, it'll only operate this metering plunger just a little bit, so it'll pump just a little bit of oil. And, let's see, so we're going to look at the bottom of the pump. So this metering pl plunger bore here corresponds with this hole here. And under that plug, is this. This is actually a check valve. The oil comes in through there. It's like this is like a banjo bolt. The oil comes in through there and there's a check ball in there. So when the plunger is on the upstroke, it'll suck oil in. When the plunger is on the downstroke, it'll seat that ball against its seat. And when it does that, it'll force oil. Let's go back to the top here. It'll, it'll force oil up an internal passage. You could see part of the internal passage here in the casting which corresponds with 
this uh, check valve here, which is underneath this plug, and then it goes out of that little sight, sight uh, glass dripper. So you can see how many drops are being delivered with every stroke of the plunger or the, you know, the oiler arm. Now this check valve looks like this when you take it apart. There's the plug, there's the spring, and I thought I was expecting a ball, and you know, there's a ball in here, but this is actually a molded piece of plastic or rubber, and it is nowhere near serviceable anymore. See, there's a crack in it, and it, it just kind of disintegrates, and there's a couple other, um, well, there's another, I'll show you here. That's another one. It's just totally destroyed, so I may either replace this with a ball or maybe find some way to recreate this. Anyway, this is the check valve that is uh, here. So th this operates just like any plunger pump, it, like, even just like a, a like an enter pack hand pump. It's just a piston that goes in and out of a bore and an inlet check valve and an outlet check valve. So again, the, the inlet check valve is this one that, that goes in the bottom, down there, and then the outlet check valve is right here, and that allows this plunger pump to always keep its prime and always pump oil and not, you know, kind of just shuttle oil back and forth. Those check valves prevent that. So once oil gets dripped out of this little sight dripper, it drips into these little wells. And you see in the bottom of each well there's a hole. That hole feeds the inlet of these plungers, or these pumps, and I'll call these the delivery pumps. They are of a fixed displacement and they have an outlet check valve back over to the, to the underside. This is the outlet check valve. This is the fitting taken out. There's a copper uh, ceiling washer there. And on, uh, let's see, and here you see it's threaded. There is the outlet check spring and uh, pop it, and then the retaining screw. So all that goes into the outlet check valve like so. And again, this little piece of rubber is destroyed, so this will have to be renewed somehow. Now this pump, the delivery pump, there's an outlet check valve but no inlet check valve. And I think that's uh, kind of for two reasons. Firstly, there's a, a variable amount of oil that's going to be dripping into these uh, reservoirs here, and there may not be enough for that pump to uh, continually be delivering oil. There might be some air in it as well. So the way it works, I don't know if you'll be able to see. If you look down, yeah, you can see it. If you look down in that hole, that is the uh, outlet or the uh, delivery plunger bore. There's a hole on the side of that bore. That hole is the inlet from the reservoir that the oil drips into. And when the plunger comes down, it's, uh, it's almost like a two-stroke engine. As that plunger comes down, it will cover that hole. And then it will, once it covers the hole and pressurizes the oil in that little hole there, in this bore, the oil can't go anywhere except out of the outlet check valve. And then when the plunger goes back up, it uncovers that hole and allows oil to flow back into that, that, uh, that bore there, ready for the next pump. So that's the operation of it. Pretty simple. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take all these plungers out and make sure they go back into the same hole they came out of. Just clean everything up, make sure there's no rust or pitting. This particular one that just happened to fall out, this one looks pretty nice. So I'll go through all these, make sure it's all the way it should be. Clean the inside, and then I'm going to have to figure out what to do here. I might just try a ball and see how it pumps.
So here it is, all disassembled. I took the shaft out. The way this came out, it wasn't really worth filming. You just drive these taper pins out, which surprisingly gave me not very much trouble at all. And then undid this nut here. The, the, this is a packing nut in here, uh, so you might want to re uh, renew the packing inside that nut if you're redoing one of these oilers. Take that nut off, that nut off, and then this shaft just kind of angles and comes right out. So that's it. I took the sight glass out. There's just a little retainer screw up there. So it's ready for everything to be cleaned. And I'll reassemble it, put some oil in there, make sure everything pumps. Uh, I'll, I have to figure out the check ball, uh, check valve situation here. And once we figure out a solution that works, take it apart again, clean it all up, and give it a nice coat of paint.